Hey, Damp, how you doing? That's interesting. <laughs> uh, I'm good. Just uh, doing this. I was like busy uh, earlier. Like I had to book a bunch. I had to book some. I had to look at a bunch of flights and stuff for for a trip later. How you doing? It's mutating, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to think of what the illustration is going to look like and the co overall composition and the lighting and the mood. So I was just looking at reference right now. I feel like my ZBrush is about to crash. I don't think it like anything I just did. <laughs>
body and it's visual it's not just numbers and notches like it, if you want to make him uh, buffer you just slide this up and he's buffer um, if you just if you want him to be super skinny then you just need to slide this up and he'll be super skinny um, you can also break the limitations so you can make him extremely skinny um, see like here's a fat option um, yeah and like it's just it's just much easier to work with I mean it does have its glitches uh, every now and then right now it's working pretty well um, yeah it's the same thing and then you can also bring if you own poser you can bring in all of that content into this also for instance um, like see here you can see poser 11 content that I uh, attached to this um, the same bodies and, and hand poses and whatnot are still uh, are still here so see how the right hand changed um, let's see Poses, female. Pose, there it is. So many sub menus. Uh, okay, so here's one. See, it it attaches. Um. It's a very friendly program. Uh, I like it a lot, um, and I love the way the figures look. Also, um, yeah, but like, I mean, it doesn't matter. Like, I just opened Poser just because I'm used to opening Poser, because uh, I'll use it for normal work. Uh, but I'll use Daz for more of my freelance stuff. Uh, yeah, the interface is weird. I realize you have to hold. Yeah, the controls. Um, it's not my control. So, the thing is, you have to hold control and option to rotate the camera. Um, once I figured that out, like everything was super easy. Um, I haven't done any animation stuff in Daz, but um, what I also like is that you can attach like um, armor, or whatever that you sculpt in ZBrush, and then um, attach it to the body, and then you can pose the figure. You can do the same thing in uh, Poser, but I think it takes a few more steps. Um, and you know, I just I just try to avoid the extra work. I'm pretty lazy. <laughs> I gotta remember that. I'm in poser. But definitely check it out. I mean, it's a very useful program. I mean, you can't sculpt every human you want to put into a scene. It'll just take forever. There's also expressions, of course. See how scared he is? It's just super annoying to select stuff.
Oh, I'm fairly new to Daz. I only use it sometimes. Again, only for like character design stuff. Just so I can paint on top of it and do my thing. I'm not sure if I'm going to do this in Keisha or Moto. If I do in Moto, I have to do a lot of work. <laughs> so that's what I'm trying to think of right now. Let's see how it looks in... Well, let me close some of these programs that I don't need anymore. Oh no, I closed as. Oh, cool dad stuff. It looks like the uh, stuff that they put on their website for uh, publicity. <laughs> it looks cool. Wow, you did a lot of stuff with it. takes a while to render these things. Oh wait, I don't have Moto on this computer. That sucks. I just realized that. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe I won't render tonight. <laughs> I forgot what I'm, what I'm gonna do about that.
Um, sometimes I will, well, first I need to find a camera angle that I like, and then, um, I will do like a very rough paint over on top of it. Super rough, no detail, nothing like that. Just to get an idea of exactly what's going to happen in, in, uh, in the concept. And then, um, and then from there I'll find like the proper reference and, and images and everything to, to make it look good. But this early stage is, is definitely the hardest. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. I think I need like an additional supporting light on the bottom. So this is usually the part that takes the longest. Um, it, it's just figuring out the composition and, and, and what my plan is. But I feel like this is looking pretty good. I can imagine what I could do to add to this to give it to give it additional depth. Say this really quick. Oh, shoot. The less you paint, the more realistic things will look, unless you're ridiculously badass. <laughs> Cool, I'm liking that. Um, still could use a little bit. Oh, it's hard. The other thing is uh, in Moto, you can apply um, realistic sunlight, and that gives you um, some great shadows. Keyshot, however, and I and if you guys know, please tell me. It only gives you um, soft shadows, so that's that's the other problem that I am having is I'm gonna have to manually add a bunch of shadows. So I'm gonna save this scene. Man, I'm really gonna have to figure out. I might have to do the renders and then stream everything after, after I finish the renders. Yes, and I know this looks like a penis. I'm just noticing that now. <laughs> um, okay. So I feel like this is going to have to be kind of dark. And pick up uh, highlights also. be very rough. OK. 
Okay, and then we'll call that. Oh, sorry, I should show you guys this. Sorry, I know this is getting super boring. <laughs> but this is the part I feel like um, most people don't like streaming. Because it is boring. I, I sure as hell don't like streaming it. Just because I don't want to bore you guys to death. <clears throat> oh, shit. Just the ground, man. Just the ground. Okay, I'm gonna add a camera. Lock it. Ah, I know what I did wrong. So be careful of your naming conventions. In oh, huge tip. When you're in uh, ZBrush and sending stuff to Keyshot using the bridge, if they have the same name, they're going to capture the same material. Um, I spent forever like trying to figure out what the problem was one day because the materials wouldn't separate and they wouldn't... It was, it was just, They wouldn't behave. It was just so annoying. Then I realized they all had the same exact name, so the programs couldn't figure out what was what. So they just assumed it was the same same thing. Hopefully that's a problem. That's usually what the problem is. Naming conventions. Go back to Keyshot. Thanks, man. Yeah, David, it was like super frustrating. Also, I'm sure you know this. Let's say you poly paint something and you like the um, material properties of something else in Keyshot. Now, what you would think you would have to do is just grab the material and drag it onto whatever it is uh, that you want to replace. Um, but if you do that, it, it erases all the paint work that you did in ZBrush and it's super frustrating. And I seriously spent like a couple hours trying to figure this out and I should have just Googled it. <laughs> if you hold alt or option and drag a material onto a uh, object, I'll show you. So, um, let's say I like plastic. Um, let's say I like hard shiny. If I hover over, it's just going to replace what I have, and that's super frustrating. Um, if you hold Option and drag over, it's going to maintain. Um, it's going to maintain the paint job, but capture the material properties. And that is a beautiful thing. So. Uh, another quick tip since we're kind of talking about render stuff and I'm probably gonna have to come back um, to show you guys uh, my render um, I highly recommend adding photo textures to your renders so I'm bringing in a picture a photo of rust hovering over and letting go um, you can just either add it to the bump or specularity um, or opacity, but opacity will really mess it up. Um, or uh, color. So I'm going to add it to the bump. Um, earlier I tried a procedural bump using um, uh, ZBrush, but it looked weird. It didn't look good at all. So I always just use a photo texture. Usually I use rust and stuff like that. It doesn't matter what you use. I don't use skin because it's too procedural. Um, so let me go back to my camera. Remember, always create a camera and lock it because Keyshot loves to move your camera. So I feel like most of this is looking pretty sexy. And sexy is good. But I'll need to look at photo reference to make sure the lighting is what I need and the contrast is really solid. 
Um, cool. Glad you like it, David. Oh shit, did I just mess up the camera? A little bit, it's okay. So yeah, here is the preview so far. So obviously I need something here um, and an environment. So um, let's take this into Photoshop and paint over it a little bit. So I'm going to take a screenshot now uh, with the way it is and I'll call it uh, Wormy. Okay, let's go to Photoshop. Uh, wow. And here we go. Yeah, the shadows, man, the shadows. That's that's the one thing that kills me. If it just had hard shadows, like everything would be perfect. I, I think it is a feature of the latest key shot. Um, they sent me an extended trial, but I mean, I don't want to use an extended trial because why get used to something if you're never going to use it? I mean, it, it's a fun program for sure, but I'm not about to pay $2,000 for something I can do in another program, you know? Okay. So the rough, um, I'm obviously not going to figure this out now. I'm probably going to need some time and sit with it to sit with it, um, and really figure it out. So I chose a dark gray because the environment is fairly dark. <clears throat> now I'm going to look at the reference I was originally looking at. See how there's like a lot of mood in these photos. <clears throat> see that a lot of mood so the goal isn't to copy what's in this environment the goal is to capture the same mood um that so okay so my students that uh, like some students i've had in my classes think that's like cheating or something like that but the only way you're going to learn how to do something is if you see it you can't paint or draw something you've never seen before so yeah you can be stubborn and just try to come up with lighting from your imagination but your imagination is based off of what you've seen in the past um so yeah there you know there it is so yeah i'm going to be referencing this um because it has really great mood really great contrast and color and it's kind of along the same theme right So I probably won't do the color adjustment now. I'll do that at the end when it's all like together. So I'm going to grab, man, the thing about having a 4K monitor is when I bring it on to my normal monitor, it's like ridiculously huge, like every window that I bring on. Um, okay, so let's look up, uh, I don't know. Not New Zealand. Is it New Zealand? Mountains. No, it's not New Zealand. Is it New Zealand? I'm trying to think of something. Oh, I think it is Iceland. I'm thinking of. Anyway, so I'm going to block it in really quick so I don't lose focus.
So really quick, I'm going to rough up the uh, models so I don't get distracted. Because sometimes, I don't know how you guys are, but when you see your, um, whenever you see your renders and models, like you just, it's so pretty, you don't want to touch it. <laughs> so I'm just going to rough it up uh, a bit. There we go. Uh, yeah, maybe Norway, I'll have to check that out. Let's get this blocked out first. Maybe some kind of pod or something landed. I'll do that like right here. Not back there. Um, I feel like something needs to go here. And I feel like this is going to need some support also. silhouette and shape to pop. Yeah, definitely need something over there.
Hey, Dan Pants. Yeah, HDRI, um, so I'm guessing you have to crank the contrast like a ridiculous amount to get it. Um, it's still not as nice as other programs, like it's a constant battle, um, or you have to do multiple renders. I'm not a fan of that. Um, but maybe, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely check it out later tonight. Um, I'm just, right now I'm just trying to figure out exactly how I'm going to compose this. Because I need to bring focus to our friend here. And also, I'm, I'm also thinking about what story I'm trying to tell. So yeah, definitely not going to finish this one tonight. That's the hardest part, is coming up with the story. I'm not sure if this should be outdoors or indoors. I'm thinking in outdoors would be fun. Maybe some kind of hive. So I'm also trying to add lots of uh, directional cues for the for the um, viewer's eye. It's so like this kind of stuff. that makes you um, look at him. Except this dude's like, look up. <laughs> That's the annoying thing. Yeah, it's think of stuff. Like the detail stuff, I'm not worried about like drool and everything. That's like pretty straightforward. It's just uh, composing this is the hard part. Let's just try to make it look cool.
yeah, story is the hardest part. Because, like, at work, you know the story. They tell you the story. Um, so you know exactly what you need to communicate, and your focus is purely that. Does this, And you're always asking that question. Does this communicate the idea um, that you're trying to uh, show off or whatever, or the, what the client asked for? Um, that's always the goal. Um, this, I'm, I'm starting to come up with it, but the hardest part is actually the dude in the center. That's like what's throwing me off quite a bit. I was never planning on adding a guy, but I feel like, um, I should. So I'm kind of seeing something coming together. I can't have this be the focus though, this area. I need it to be, oh wait, I think I came up with something. Um, yeah, so, what I do is, So yeah, up close it looks like crap. The goal is to make sure you like it like this, so you get those clicks, right? <laughs> um, and likes. Um, so now I just gotta figure out what exactly it is I'm gonna add to the background. Maybe I'm thinking some kind of like scrapyard, junkyard in the back. Um, and maybe this guy just wandered into some kind of graveyard of ships. Oh shit, I just deleted my brush. <laughs> I hate it when I do that. That's like the worst. I always do that. It drives me crazy. Um, Yeah, we could add some kind of weird, we could add bones, like there have been animals here, we've all seen that idea. And then ship parts, so I'd have to like find some ships I could use. See, and there could be like cool little holes in it. Maybe that's what this stuff is, just random parts. Be careful with the highlights. And then we could use the carve into the background a little bit. Yeah, we could have like the reflection of uh, the fuselage. Or the uh, the windows of a fuselage, but then it'd be a sci-fi ship, so I'd have to figure that out. And also, how do you get it to read as a ship if it's like sci-fi? And there could be these weird pillars that are like, like you don't know what they are. We'll just leave that as a mystery.
So yeah, we could have various little parts kind of in the ground. Remember, the, the goal is to keep your attention on the story. Now, maybe eventually we'll add like some rain. Because those little dots are reminding me about today and how it was like pouring like crazy. It just, like we went out for lunch and then we sat down to eat. Or actually I sat down to eat when my, friend, my buddy was still inside ordering his food. And then, uh, I was just, like, looking at, like, the water sprinkling or whatever, and then all of a sudden I noticed that it was pouring really hard, like, aggressively. It was crazy. And, uh, he, like, shouted at me. He's like, yeah, baby, we should eat inside. And it was, it was just insane. It was crazy how intense the rain was. So that kind of justif justifies them being a little wet. I might add a little bit more to him. Since water is like splashing off of his head. And that lets me add more reflection to him. And then of course we add you know, like the drool and stuff that I'll paint later. But I'll have to like find a way to separate it from the rain. Blah. Just give him some like nasty drool. I still got to find a better way to, I might remove him from this uh, spot and bring him, actually I don't know, still don't know yet. Because um, I could add more to, oh, did I ping over it? I think I did. Oh, here we go. Yeah, 
There we go. Bring out the ground a little bit. Or, um... Might remove some of this ground from the uh, ZBrush scene. So that way you can see this tail. So I feel like I created this big thing that says look over, look at this dude. Cause I honestly can't stop looking at this dude. Um, so I need to add like some kind of junk or something to bring it, bring your eye back a little bit. So I don't know, maybe this is like um, a little shack or something or part of a ship. So I hope that's not too tiny for you guys. Oh shoot, the music stopped. I didn't even realize it. See what happens when you space out when you work. Um, I actually got to sign off uh, in a little bit anyway. Um, how's the winds? I still remember my broken umbrella. Um, it was windy last night. It wasn't w too windy today. It was mostly raining like crazy for like a good 30 minutes and then it just kind of sprinkled um so yeah weather is really weird um really quick so again i gotta kind of figure out i guess i kind of figured it out actually i gotta figure out the rendering package because obviously i'm not gonna be able to do this in keyshot <laughs> well maybe i've never built a scene this large in um in zbrush might be interesting, like a cool experiment, right? To, to do a, like an actual environment concept using um, Keyshot. See, the problem is um, I don't have a pro version, so I can't separate materials, which means I have to manually select everything, which sucks so much. There is a way you can do it by assigning um, flat materials so you can select it like a mask. Um, but even that sucks. Um, you can get a good depth map using a normal 3D renderer, um, like Moto for instance, um, and that will give you the depth. So all this haze and whatnot, I can get a render pass that will give me an accurate um, set, uh, accurate layer of that, rather than me kind of guessing and making it up. Um, so yeah, I, I just gotta make that decision. Maybe I'll, um, maybe I'll just build it all and then. Next time I come back, I'll have it ready to show you guys. Okay. Um, let me save that. Wow, see, I never save. That's a huge mistake. Always save. Really bad at it. Okay. 
So see, it didn't exactly copy my reference perfectly. I just um, used it as a starting guide. So um, thanks, Damp. Uh, yeah, I'm going to sign off in just a second. I appreciate you uh, um, hanging out. Um, so yeah, really quick. Uh, so yeah, this was just a guide to get me started, um, to give uh, me an idea of the mood and whatnot and help me light my scene. I used it to create an HDRI image, um, which led to this lighting scenario and really helped me kind of figure out what my plan was. Um, but remember, story is everything. Story is absolutely everything. So um, yeah, I mean, if you zoom out, you kind of get what's going on. Um, and then at the very end, I'll do like the color adjustments or whatever to give it, you know, whatever kind of mood I want. And then I'll add uh, curves or levels to adjust the contrast. because I tend to go very neutral with my values. Um, anyway, so I'll see you guys next time. Um, yeah, I hope you learned something or got anything out of this. <laughs> um, yeah, so again, this is uh, the key shot render that I'm gonna be working with. Make sure I save it. So it'll look pretty detailed. Um, when I add uh, the rest of the environment in here. But because ZBrush doesn't have an actual camera, it's gonna be really hard for me to uh, match the concept I did. So I'm most likely gonna have to export this scene into Moto, find a camera that matches the one I just made in my 2D painting, lock it, then start building the environment I did um, that, that I kind of suggested in the painting. And I'll just do simple shapes in another program and then paint on top of it. Okay, um, yeah, so here it is. Um, here's the uh, ZBrush scene. And it all started from that little sketch that I did uh, the other day, um, Sunday. So cool, I'll see you guys next time. Uh, I won't linger anymore. Um, yeah, talk to you later.